2023 Tinubu Shatima Presidential Campaign Council has been dissolved after more than seven months of operation. In a statement jointly signed by the Director General and Secretary of the Campaign Council, Governor Simon Lalong and James Faleke said the, the dissolution is to enable the transition and inauguration committees effectively carry out their assignments ahead of the May 29 inauguration ceremony of the President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The statement commended the chairman of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, President Muhammad Buhari, national, states, local, governments, and world leadership of APC, First Lady Aisha Buhari, wife of the President-elect, Senator Oluwe Mitinubu, and wife of the Vice President-elect, Nana Kashim Shatima, for their unwavering support throughout the campaign. Others acknowledged are the leadership and APC caucus of the 9th National Assembly, the APC governors and their wives, led by the chairman of the Progressives Governors Forum, Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu of KV State, ministers and other members of the executive arm of government, private organizations for their notable contributions to the party's victory. APC 2023 Tinubu Shatima presidential campaign was inaugurated in September 2022 for the 2023 presidential election. Troops of Operation Hadim Daiji, Hadirin Daiji have neutralized seven terrorists Apprehended two others, destroyed several of their camps in Zumi and Shinkafi local government area of Zamfara State. Details of the report will bring to you in subsequent bulletins. The public has been encouraged to submit petitions and report all fraudulent activities and acts of injustice by public office holders and others to the Cross River State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission. The state governor, Professor Ben Ayade, stated this while speaking to political appointees in Calabar. Paul Abel reports. Injustice in public service and corruption in public offices are two evils which, if not checked, can destroy the productivity and prosperity of any state or society. This, the state governor charges the people to report such anomalies and the commission to play its role as government will not protect any official for corrupt practices. So you don't have to wait for EFCC. We have our own team here that will deal with the situation on the ground. Truly, truly, this gives us a full control over our financial transactions, uh, anti-corruption, public complaints, misplacement, wrong promotion, your rule goes beyond corruption. You know there is public complaint component. Injustice, abuse of power, illegal promotion. Some people have promoted five, six steps. You don't know the laws. When you have two or five, I don't know what you want to do. You know, all of us have to do when they say that if no men for good law, they will look at the government to be commissioned. The law empowering the Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate and prosecute suspects was passed by the State House of Assembly in 2022. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. While the Lagos State Government is increasing monitoring and surveillance towards Corbyn incident building collapse in the state, another three-floor building under construction at Plot 5996 Ladipo, Oluwale Street, Apapa, has partially collapsed. The structure was said to have caved in due to distress compounded by thunder strike from the early morning rainfall in most parts of Lagos metropolis. An official of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Ajayomi, Ifeludun, local council development area, Ashimiyu, Taimiyu, who was among the early callers at the scene, said no casualty was recorded. He explained further that most of the workers at the site had left for the Salah break, a vital reason why no one was caught in the web of the unfortunate incident. Meanwhile, the Lagos State Building Control Agency says immediately the incident was flagged on its platform, a preliminary report showed that the building owner only obtained provisional development permit for two floors 
as against the three floors being constructed, while the developers ignored the stop work and seal up orders of the Lagos State Building Control Agency and continued construction secretly. The agency has, however, ordered the sealing off of the structure pending inquiries into the collapse to unravel the minute de the minute details and guide appropriate actions. In the meantime, Governor Babajide Somwolu has ordered the State Building Control Agency to pull down buildings that do not have the permit of the Lagos State Government and those that violate waterfront setbacks to forestall the recurring incidents of collapse um, buildings across the metropolis. He gave the order after taking an on-the-spot assessment of building constructions at various sites in Banana Island in Ikoi area of Lagos. Musa Toilet will tell us more. Clearing of rubbles at the scene of the ill-fated seven-story building, which recently went down, was ongoing when Governor Babajide Sonwulu arrived at Banana Island. Three adjoining uncompleted buildings, oblivious of their fate, tore above the rubbles. The unfortunate incident informed the inspection of other construction sites scattered across Banana Island. However, illegality and flagrant violations of building codes stared the governor in the face, even at sites where the seal of the state government expressed disapprovals. We love all of you. And you said that we should give you authority, we'll give you all the authority. You bring back to me. So no. More worrisome was the discovery of various sand mining locations where encroachment on waterfronts have remained bold. A visibly concerned Governor Sonwulu vows to clamp down on contractors who cut corners and endanger the lives of residents across the metropolis. The illegality is, is real. And so that's why we're going around other properties in Banana. You've all seen the, the extent of um, what I would call unapproved extension into the water. This is a total recklessness of all of the developers. And we will make a strong point out of this place. And of course, our own officers who are also not alive to their responsibility. You know, we've had to change staff here and there. But what we're doing right now, we've set up a small um, external committee, a seven-man committee, who we've given them two weeks to independently also ascertain you know, what has gone on here. Um, and so they should finish their, their work by uh, maybe to towards the end of next week. The governor says town planning and building control regulations will be strengthened to curb sharp practices in the built subsector across the state. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA. As the administration of President Muhammad Muhari winds down, some Nigerians say the president will be remembered for fulfilling his promise on the Calabar, Calabar E2 road. Clement Barikyu has an update on the road project. Awarded at the cost of 185 billion naira, the 28.6 kilometers road project has been one of the campaign promises of past leaders before President Muhammad Buhari. Work is progressing at the three sections of the road project, though slowed down by compensation issues. This side is good, and there is no problem in this side. They are working on this side very good. This is my father, Pam Pam Fruit. You know, they have not paid us, but that's where we are using to fit ourselves. If you see from the zero point there, they cannot continue the job from there. Because of the, a lot of houses here, they have not paid compensation. So that is the major challenge that the, even the contractor have with the community. This one dream comes true. I've told you how much we have waited, how long we have waited. If without compensation they've come this far, then God knows how far they would have gone. The challenges notwithstanding, the federal government is committed to completing the road projects. This compensation issue is a, is a national issue. And it has to do with some policy changes and all that. But I think the minister is working seriously on that. He's handling the matter and I believe very soon uh, there will be a resolution on that. The Calabarito Road project with a two-year completion tenure is being financed through the NNPC tax credit in Uyo, Clement Barikui, NTA News. All right, let's go on a break. We're back. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. Being an essential worker puts one in the state of the nine 
it's oneself to protect the country's national interest as well as service to humanity. However, as the Muslim faithful celebrate Eid al-Fitr, how do this set of people enjoy this special day? Let's hear more from Oyemi Ajayi. Driving through one of the busiest roads in the Federal Capital Territory, the road was quite empty, which doesn't depict its normal nature. The visit is not far-fetched, it is a future celebration, and that explains that most of the people are in their respective homes or places of celebration. But guess what? There are some people who do not have that luxury as their respective occupations remain paramount. These are people that are awake when others are fast asleep. They are at their duty post when others are resting, standing when others are seated. These are the essential workers. Here is Moses Tapangu, one of the major editors in NTN 24. You can't put him on the spot for dozen of This is because he had worked through the night to ensure that the bulletin is in order. Good morning, people of God. Hi, how are you doing? Fine, how are you doing? Meet Dennis Adegunui, the news producer of the day, with his vigilant eyes gazed at the system just to ensure a flawless news production. Your delectable on the screen personalities, Jude Bello, Osa De Ebel, and Ruth Aguele. So I have to be at work, and um, based on the fact that I enjoy what I do, I don't really see holidays as um, a big deal. Deborah Aguola, a manager of news and current affairs, is not also spared despite being a birthday. To them, being an essential service worker comes with a load of responsibility which cannot just be ignored as their career hangs in the balance of national interest, stability, security and sovereignty of the country. It is not easy because most times in our local parlance they will say, not only you they do government work, <laughs> so, but at least um, the people around me understand the nature of my job and I am very grateful for that. Essential workers should be given the desired attention that they deserve. I'm talking about doctors now, even media practitioners like us. Um, there should be a sense of recognition. Though as an essential worker, one doesn't have much luxury of time as others who are celebrating seller. But the delicacy of the celebration cannot just be missed. Oyeyemi Ajayi, NTA News. That's why we're here to serve. Following a fatal crash that occurred at World Oil OPIC on the Lagos Ibadan Sun, um, Expressway Sunday morning, the Court Martial Federal Safety Corps, Dauda Aliviu, calls on vehicle operators to make routine vehicle maintenance a priority to eradicate road mishap resulting from mechanical deficiencies. A statement by the court public education officer BC Kazim notes that the main cause of the crash which killed seven people was brake failure which resulted to loss of control. Injured persons were rescued to Lagos State Accident an emergency center Old Tollgate while the dead bodies were deposited at Ogun State University Teaching Hospital mortuary in Shagamu, Ogun State. Some concerned stakeholders have appealed to both regular and ad hoc staff of the National Population Commission to be dedicated and honest in executing responsibilities during the coming census for the country to reap the immense benefits attached to the exercise. Mohammed Musa Askira, who interacted with the stakeholders, highlights some of the gains Nigeria stand to benefit with a successful census count. Nigerians need to see population count as an instrument for socio-economic planning rather than a tool to hold sway section of the country over another as strongly being perceived in some quarters. Data and figures obtained from an accurate population census will give room for the optimal utilization of the nation's human and natural resources for the betterment of the country. There is no any country that will succeed without knowing the exact number of its citizens. It also has the essential benefit of that. Leaders cannot design anything as far as their people or subjects are concerned without knowing their actual number. Because it's then that you can assess how many taxpayers you have, how many able-bodied workers you have, both males and females, what kind of uh, educational need you will have in terms of secondary, primary, and education like that. Uh, what is the rate of uh, uh, 
uh, expansion of the population. Those could be used by governments to plan and execute policies and programs that will impact positively on the lives and livelihood of the citizens, knowing the population size of an area economic and educational status as well as other demographic variables will give governments an idea in determining the needed infrastructure and health care provisions among others it's from the population that you determine how many science students do you have and how many do you need do you need more science students than art students and things like that what essentially what is more essential for economic development social development to know the geographical location, the geographical division, how many are rural dwellers, how many are urban dwellers, and uh, to know uh, how many uh, percentage are literate, what is the percentage of illiteracy that will enable government plan for its development. All and sundry, the affirm has ensured the success of the 2023 Nigeria Population Census to address the country's number of development challenges. Muhammad Musa Askira, NTN News. Books are reservoirs of knowledge which exposes one to the world, both imaginary and real. Now, while books inform, entertain, thrill, and captivate readers, the protection of authors' rights is, however, vital. Um, Hadiza Godwin Ibunain, this report takes us through some of the interesting facts about World Book Day. <laughs> the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, invites the international community to celebrate World Book and Copyright Day in April. The World Book and Copyright Day, also known as International Day of the Book, recognizes books as a link between the past and the future, a bridge between generations and a cross-culture which calls for celebration. On this day, UNESCO recognizes the various stakeholders that make up book sector, authors, publishers, booksellers, and libraries. In all of these, governments and private bodies in Nigeria have taken numerous steps to promote reading culture and also protect copyright laws in the country. We bring in uh, publishers, reputable publishers, whereby you get uh, the originals, not uh, pirated books. So sp students and parents and uh, teachers I encourage to come to uh, the book fair years that we organize every year. 2023 World Book and Copyright Day with the team Indigenous Languages is expected to highlight the rich cultural heritage and the importance of native languages in literature and storytelling. This step, stakeholders in the education sector believe it will improve understanding in learning. So that's what you feel. There's no way to see a book that is, is maybe too necessary for you to use. Sometimes you need to think, you need to pick, pick the main points, and as you do that, it helps you build up your own uh, reading abilities. It is interesting to note that a copyright law protects the original work of the creator or author, and if the creator fails to comply with any legal formality or when the right expires, it becomes a public domain. The duration of copyright is, however, 70 years after the death of the author. Hadiza Godwin Ebuni, NC News. Foreign countries evacuate their nationals from Batu Tan, Sudan, where deadly fight rages into a second week between forces loyal to two rival generals. Uche Gochuku brings us update now on the Sudan crisis. Heavy fighting broke out on April 15 between forces loyal to Army Chief Abdel Fattah Abriyan and his deputy turned rival Mohamed Daglo, who commands the powerful paramilitary rapid support forces RSF. The former allies who seized power in a 2021 coup fell out in a bitter power struggle. Sudan's sudden slide into conflict has led to thousands of foreigners, including diplomats and aid workers, being stranded. As the fighting entered its second week, President Joe Biden, in a tweet, said on his orders, the United States military conducted an operation to extract U.S. government personnel from Khartoum in response to the situation in Sudan, and that the U.S. has suspended operations at the embassy in Khartoum. 
Francis Foreign Ministry said a rapid evacuation operation had begun and that European citizens and those from allied partner countries would also be assisted. The UK, Turkey, Italy, among other countries, have also launched evacuation operations from the Northeast African nation, where the first battle has killed more than 400 people and left thousands wounded. Fighting continued Sunday with automatic gunfire echoing across Khartoum and Sudanese military aircraft roaring overhead. Turkey embassy said on Twitter that rescue operations began at dawn via road from the southern city of Red Medani, but plans were postponed from one site in Khartoum after explosions near a mosque designated as the assembly area. Meanwhile, Pope Francis during mass at St. Peter's Square in Rome advocated dialogue between warring military factions in Sudan. The situation in Sudan. I am renewing my call for the violence to stop as quickly as possible and for dialogue to resume. A new internet outage was reported in Sudan on Sunday as the fighting persisted despite the announcement of a 72-hour truce by both parties. Uchi Ugochuku, NCA News. Next is Sports Update. Piatu United recorded a slim one win over Masarawa United in their Nigeria Premier Football League match the fifth in a counter, which was live on ATA on Sunday. Silas Merritt netted in the 13th minute to hand the Peace Boys the win which moved them to third in the pay. Oh. Well, it's the very first. Daryl Silas <laughs> with the opener for Plateau United here at the New George Stadium. In other results, Emba International scored a late equalizer to earn a winner draw against Wemo Stars. Shooting Stars beat Gombe United 3 0, just as Niger Tornadoes defeated Abia Warriors by the same margin, with Sunshine Stars edging out Lobby Stars 1 0. In the meantime, Reverse United's hope of qualifying for the semi finals of the CAF Confederation Cup now hangs by a tiny thread after they were beaten 2 0 at home by young Africans in their quarter final first leg on Sunday. Democratic Republic of Congo forward Fista Mayele scored a lead brace in Rio as the Nigerian champions now have a huge mountain to climb in the second leg in Dar es Salaam next Sunday. We lost some of our key players in today's game. If we have enough uh, uh, rest and you know, we have all our uh, preparations in top gear, we will be able to go there and also surprise them. It's, it's very difficult to, to win in, in Nigeria. Uh, arrivals or aqua or any, uh, uh, anything. For that, the result is uh, very, very good. In England, Newcastle United dented Tottenham's Champions League hopes with a 6 1 humiliation in the Premier League, while West Ham United moved six points clear of the relegation zone with an emphatic final win over Bournemouth at the Vitality Stadium. Meanwhile, it will be a first all Manchester final in the FA Cup when Manchester United and Manchester City clash at Wembley on June the 3rd. United booked their place in the final after overcoming Brighton 7 6 on penalties after both teams could not be separated in 120 minutes. With sports update, Badi Adeloye, into news. <laughs> That's Panorama. Thank you for your company. Do enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Ruth Aguela. Bye.